Hey you guys, thanks for joining me today. Uh, I'm gonna introduce myself really quickly. Uh, my name is Helen, I'm 19 years old and my pronouns are she, her. Uh, some of you guys might still know me from when I was at ISU. Yeah. Uh, today I'm gonna talk about a topic that's very important to me, the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, I'm just gonna go over some basic terms and some tips and I really hope uh, everyone can learn something today. So, I do want to start this presentation with a little disclaimer. People are different, and this topic is generally really complex, um, and there's a lot to take in, so what I present here might not apply to every single person in the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, I'm still learning myself, uh, and um, I'm just asking you to be patient and be open-minded. Um, but if you do feel like you have any feedback or anything that I missed, um, please let the Diversity Club know and then they'll let me know. Um, I'd love to know what you think. Um, okay, let's get started. Um, what does LGBTQIA plus even mean? What does it stand for? It stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer or questioning, intersex, asexual, and more. Um, all of these are terms for sexualities or gender identities. Um, you might have heard them before, you might not have. Um, and I can tell you there's definitely a lot, lot more than I've listed here. Um, I won't go every, over every single one today because there's just too many. Um, but if you are interested in looking up some more, um, I can recommend the LGBTQIA uh, Resource Center Glossary. Um, it explains many LGBTQIA plus relevant terms. Um, okay. Now, um... Sex and gender. Uh, those are two terms that cause a lot of confusion, um, but it's very, very important to know what the difference is if you're going to learn about the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, so I hope this will clear it up. Um, the term sex refers to the biological side of a person. Um, someone's sex is determined by their anatomy, um, by chromosomes, hormones, etc. Um, the term gender refers to the social construct of behaviors and characteristics based on the labels of masculinity and femininity. So basically, um, gender is very much a perception of oneself. Um, it's an identity thing. It's how you feel. Um, some people's identity matches with the sex they were assigned at birth, um, and some people's gender doesn't. Um, some people don't even identify with uh, the labels man or woman, um, and find themselves uh, either you know in between somewhere, or uh, completely apart from those labels. Um, that would be called being non-binary. Um, because we have this binary system of male and female, and non-binary people don't feel part of that. Um, so I hope that was okay to understand. It's very important uh, to know the difference. Um, let's talk about sexuality. Um, first of all, sexuality and attraction is fluid. Um, it's a lot easier to think of it as a spectrum rather than a set of rules or categories. Um, even though I know people love categories, um, it's definitely easier to not, um, to not uh, think of them here. Um, there is a lot of different labels for different sexualities. Um, and I'm just gonna go over the very, very basics here because again, I've said it before, um, it's just, there's just too many. Um, Okay, let's get started. Um, lesbian and gay. Um, a lesbian is a woman who likes, loves, or is attracted to women. Um, a gay man is a man who likes, loves, or is attracted to men. Um, pretty easy to understand. Um, now the terms bisexual and pansexual um, can be a little tricky. Um, they cause a lot of confusion um, because the lines are often blurred between the two, um, but I hope these definitions make sense to you. Um, so someone who is bisexual is someone who is attracted to people of their own gender, 
and others. It does not necessarily mean being attracted to only two genders, even though uh, that's what the name suggests. Um, pansexual is someone who is, or can be, attracted to all genders. Um, bisexuality and pansexuality can overlap, but it doesn't have to. Oftentimes people just feel more comfortable with one or the other label, um, and that's perfectly fine. Um, now, terms asexual and aromantic refer to someone who either doesn't, uh, doesn't or rarely feel uh, sexual attraction to someone um, or romantic attraction to someone. Um, that obviously doesn't mean that they're incapable of love or something. Um, it's just about the attraction. Um, another very important thing. Gender identity. Let's talk about it. Um, some people's gender identity matches with the sex they were assigned at birth. Um, the term used to describe this is cisgender. So say you were born with female anatomy and you also feel like a girl. Um, that means you are cisgender. Um, some people, though, feel like they were born a different gender than the sex they were assigned at birth. Um, the term used to describe this is transgender. Um, oftentimes, trans people will feel uh, they were born in the wrong body. Um, and nowadays, it is possible to transition, um, which is really, really cool. Um, Non-binary, I mentioned it before, um, is used for someone who doesn't feel part of the gender binary of male and female. We have this binary system and oftentimes people think you have to be a girl or a boy. Um, that's not the case. Um, because non-binary people <laughs> exist. <laughs> um, some non-binary people see themselves as part of the trans community. Um, but some don't. It's a very personal thing. Um, now, some, sometimes a person's gender identity can change over any period of time. Um, this is called being gender fluid. Um, it can change um, over days, months, years, um, and it can change to and from any gender. Um, a person might feel male one day and then non-binary the next. Um, yeah. Uh, now, a very important part of the entire gender identity topic is pronouns. Um, she, her, they, them, he, him, or neo pronouns. Um, first of all, I want to clear this up. Everyone uses pronouns, not just people in the LGBTQIA plus community. I've seen a lot of confusion about that. Um, people think that only, um, queer kids use pronouns. That's not the case. Everyone uses pronouns. We use them all the time when we talk about people. For example, um, I like his hair. Um, I like her art, I like um, their voice. Um, we, we use pronouns all the time. Um, pronouns can be a very important part of a trans or non-binary person's way of expressing their gender identity. Um, the way we talk about them day to day um, really can shape a way a person perceives themselves. Um, so asking someone for their pronouns when you meet them is a sign of respect um, and it helps destigmatize the topic. So um, it would be really cool if, you know, you meet a new person, you just ask them their pronouns um, to normalize the entire topic. Um, if someone um, introduces themselves to you with a certain set of pronouns and you accidentally use the wrong pronouns, um, just apologize and move on. Don't make a scene. Um, usually it's not a huge deal um, and they'll forgive you, but um, except if you do it on purpose and if you do it all the time. Um, that can be really, really hurtful um, and people can feel really invalidated by that. So please don't do that. <laughs> it's really rude. Um, okay, now a very, very um, big topic in the LGBTQIA plus community is coming out. Um, sometimes coming out can be really easy for people, um, but it can also be 
very, very difficult and daunting. Um, if you are part of the community and you are considering coming out, um, here's some things you might want to take into account. Um, time, place, and people. Only you decide when, where, how, and to who you come out. That is the power you hold. Um, consider safety. Unfortunately, um, you have to consider safety because it still happens that a lot of conflict arises when people come out, which isn't your fault. If there is conflict with your family due to your coming out, that is not your fault. I do want to say that. Um, your safety is always number one priority. Um, test the waters. How open-minded and accepting are the people around you um, or the people you want to come out to? Um, if you do feel unsure, um, it can help to find a friend, a counselor, um, a family member you trust to support you. Um, obviously, this also takes coming out to someone, um, but it can very much help if you have um, if you have if you have a backup, if you have someone to support you um, through your coming out process. But that is entirely up to you. Now, um, as an ally, um, or if someone has come out to you, um, the best thing you can do is listen, really listen, and be supportive. Um, please remember that coming out can be a very big step for people, um, and asking too many questions can be really overwhelming. And it's not a queer person's duty to answer all of your questions. Um, also, very, very important, um, this goes for absolutely everyone. If someone has come out to you, um, you have no right to tell anyone except if they give permission. Um, outing someone without permission can put people in really bad situations um, that you might not have thought of. And um, it takes... Um, it takes the power that they have as a queer person away from them, um, which is a really, really shitty feeling. So please, please, please um, consider that and don't do it. Um, now, some tips um, as an ally, some more tips, what can you do? Um, first of all, I do want to thank you for caring. Um, we always need more support um, because we still face a lot of conflict uh, and hate and discrimination unfortunately, all around the world. So um, thank you for caring. Thank you for wanting to support us. Um, second, uh, I want to say, um, again, the most important thing you can do is listen and be open-minded. Be accepting. Um, you might not understand everything. Um, you might not understand how gender identity works. You might not understand um, how someone's attraction to someone else works. And that is perfectly fine. You don't have to understand. All you have to do is be supportive. Um, I can tell you I don't understand everything that's going on in the community, but um, I'm still supportive. Um, and that's really important. Also, um, stand up and speak up if you see someone being discriminated against. Um, it happens a lot, unfortunately. But the more people stand up, the less hate can be spread. Though also here, it's very important um, that if you are a straight cis ally, um, do speak up, but also let queer people speak up. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, you can always check yourself and your language. It's still a common insult that I hear all the time um, to say, that's so gay, um, if you think someone's really weird or disgusting or whatever. Being gay is not an insult. Gay, the term gay is not an insult. Um, and using it as an insult um, helps create a stigma that can be really harmful. Um, so check your language, check your uh, friend's language, check your family's language. Um, try to use more gender neutral language in your day to day conversations. Um, it makes it more inclusive for everyone, and it normalizes um, the acceptance of non-binary people, for example. Um, and always, a very, very important thing, educate yourself on the matter. Um, it's great that you're 
hopefully listening to this um, to this talk here, but do some more research. Um, find out um, how stuff works. Um, find out definitions. Do your research um, because the more people know, um, the less misunderstandings can happen, the less ignorance um, is there. Um, and that's always a really big step towards a more tolerant and a more accepting society. Um, yeah, um, I guess that's practically it. Um, thank you so much for listening. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it wasn't too complicated or too much to take in. But if you do have any questions, um, please let me know. Let the Diversity Club know. Um, and yeah. Hey guys, so I really hope you liked the presentation. Um, I hope you learned something. And yeah, I just wanted to thank uh, the Diversity Club from ICU and the students from ICU who helped me with this presentation. Um, it's a really important topic and the more people learn about it, the less hate can be spread about it, um, which is you know always a good thing. Less hate is always a good thing. So yeah, uh, thank you so much and I hope you have a great day.